Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is an introductory lecture dedicated to lengths and area measurements. Um, I did touch what lengths actually is all about in some previous topics about segments, etc. Um, I would like to approach this uh, from a little bit more theoretical, more mathematical, if you wish, standpoint from the standpoint of the theory of measure. So all these uh, concepts like length and area and, and, and volume and some others actually do have certain characteristics in common and as you know mathematicians usually would like to kind of extract what's the commonality among different uh, objects and combine them into one abstract theory. So I'm talking about measure theory or theory of measurements. So let's talk about measurements. What actually measurements is? Well, first of all, if we talk about, about measurements, we have to talk about what exactly we are measuring. Uh, we can measure the length of a segment. We can measure the area of parallelogram. We can measure the height of a building. We can measure the height of a tower made of toy cubes. So, first of all, what's very important is to define the set of elements for which we introduce certain uh, numerical characteristic which is a measure of each element. So every segment has a length, every parallelogram has an area, every toy cube tower has a height. So my, my, my first point is that we have to be very strict about what exactly we are measuring. So we are talking about a set of certain elements and we would like to assign certain numerical characteristic to each of these elements. The question is how? And another question is what kind of properties this particular characteristic has? Well, again, combining a general experience about measurements, um, well, let me exemplify it. For instance, you have a tower which can consist of a certain number of toy cubes. Then you have another tower. And then we put one tower on the top of another. So we will get something like this. Something like this, right? So how about this? Does it make sense? Oh, absolutely. So not only every toy cube tower has certain characteristic like in this ca case, number of cubes, in this case it's four, in this case it's two, and the combination is six. But also our measurement actually satisfies exactly the same equa equation. Now, what does it mean? Well, let me abstract this particular thing. We have certain operation on the element of a set we are measuring, now, in this particular case, the operation on two elements, two different towers built from the toy cubes is, the operation is putting one tower on the top of another, and that's what we did here. Well, let's call it somehow this particular operation. I think it's appropriate to call it combining. So by combining two elements of our set and getting another element of the same set of all the towers built from the toy cubes, we are actually defining an operation and our measure should somehow be consistent with this operation. And this is a very important thing because if you will go to, let's say, another example, for instance, if you go to segments, if you have one segment and, has, and, and you have another segment, let's say this segment has the length 5 and this length, let's say, 2. You can put segments together 
getting some longer segment of the lengths of this with seven, right? So that's what we kind of expect from the measurement, if it's correctly made, measurement of two different segments, if we put them together, then the new segment, longer one, will have the measure which is equal to sum of the measures of these. So, one extremely important quality of the correctly defined measure on any set of objects which are subject to our measurement. The property is that if we combine in some predefined way these two objects which we are measuring, we will get another object and the measure should actually add up. So measure has a property of being additive relative to an operation of combination, whatever that operation of combination is defined whether it's putting one tower on the top of another or stringing together two different um, uh, segments or whatever else we can you know, think about it. So, we have a set of objects which we would like to measure. Then measure is some numerical characteristic of each object, each, each element of this set. We also have an operation of combination I call it combination, combining, um, of two elements of this set to get the third one, and the measure should be additive relative to this particular operation. Um, now, what else is interesting? I think it's very natural to assign the measurement or measure of empty set To be equal to zero. Empty uh, tower is basically the tower which contains zero cubes. And obviously, if this zero cube tower, if you will put on the top of another, you shouldn't really have the measurement difference. So the addition should provide exactly the same results. The four plus something, which is an empty measure, should give the four, right? Because this empty tower doesn't really add anything. So this particular measurement of the empty uh, uh, element or empty set or whatever the empty actually is depends on the set. Um, measurement should be equal to zero because that's that's the property of zero to be added to some other number to to get the same result. So that's very important. There are some other um, important uh, qualities of the measure, but these are probably the most fundamental. So if there is any element in our set which combined with another element doesn't change that other element, and that's what I call basically an empty element, uh, it should have a measure of zero. Now, in the segments, what has, um, what segment has the length of zero? Well, the segment when the left and the right boundaries coincide, basically making it a point. So if you segment add a segment of which contains only one point, you should have exactly the same result, which means that the segment which has only one point, left and right boundaries are coinciding together, it should have a length of zero. It's natural, right? Another very important property of the measure, it's positive. Uh, because if one object has a negative length and another has a positive length, we, combining them together, we kind of expect we will get, a, in some sense, a bigger object, right? Bigger segment or taller tower. So that's why measurement is defined as, as a positive function, positive numerical function um, of, of the elements of our set. So what have we learned? There is a function which is defined on every element of our set of objects we would like to measure. This function has positive or zero value. Zero is also possible. Those objects which combined with other objects do not change them should have measure of zero. And one of the probably most fundamental measure is additive. Two words or relative to the combination 
uh, to the operation of combination. So that's basically kind of a general thing about measurement. And um, what we have to talk about right now is, well, what measure is, we basically know, but how to measure. How can we measure towers from the toy cube or segments on the line? Well, um, I think very, na very natural way to measure the uh, height of the tower is how many cubes does it have. I have already started. So basically, if we consider a set of all towers, then the number of cubes in each tower is a very good numerical characteristic, which basically satisfies all our um, requirements for the measure. It's additive, obviously. It's positive or zero for a tower which contains no cubes, empty tower. Uh, what else? Basically, that's, that's what it is. So, in this particular case, all elements of our set will have an integer, a positive or zero number as the measure, and uh, it corresponds to the number of cubes this tower is built. All right, that's an easy part. Let's go into a little bit more complicated. Segments. How can we measure the segments? Well, traditional way is have some kind of a measuring unit, one particular segment, which we basically say, okay, this is the segment, and its length, by definition, would be equal to number one. So, in this particular case, I can say that, okay, this is a segment which has the length of one. Now, using the additive property of the measure, I can say that this segment, which is the combination of two units, has the lengths of two, three, four, whatever, etc. And that's how I can measure any segment which can be represented as a combination of the certain integer number of unit segments whatever number of unit segments fit into my segment, that's, that's its measure. Well, that's great. It's more or less equivalent to my towers and toy cubes, but does every segment have the property of uh, the existence of this representation? Obviously not. What if I have this particular segment? which is greater than one, but less than two. What should I do with this? Okay, let's not forget that our, our measure is just a non-negative real number, and uh, not only integer numbers we have among these numbers, but also fractions. Maybe the fractions will do. So if I can combine, let's say, one uh, unit segment and half of unit segment, which is this little piece, then I can say that the length of this should be one and a half. Now, I can obviously expand this to any rational, let's call it rational segments, which are segments with rational lengths. It means um, the length is m over n means that I should have one nth part of the unit segment and add it together m times. That's basically uh, is consequence of uh, the fact that my measure is additive, right? So if one unit has the uh, length of one, then I can divide it into n equal pieces and say that each one has the length of one nth, which is fine, right? If this has the length of one, then this has the length of one quarter. Why? Because four of them make the unit one, right? So that's why it's very natural to assign the measure of one quarter uh, to every fourth 
part of the unit segment. And then, again, using the operation of addition, I can uh, um, edit, edit, additive, the property of additiveness of the measure, I can say that if I can take one nth of the unit segment, combine them together m times, then I will have the segment which has the length m over m. So that's how I cover a lot of segments, not only those which can be combined from the integer number of unit segments, but also from its fractions, na natural fractions, like one nth. Are all the segments covered? No. Um, we have segments which cannot be represented in this particular way. And here is the perfect example, very simple example. If this is a square which has a unit one on the sides, then everybody knows that from the Pythagoras theorem, the length of the diagonal is square root of two, and um, it can be proven that this is irrational number. Actually, I did prove it, I think, some time ago when I was talking about, when I was introducing uh, irrational number in, in some numerical systems uh, lecture. I proved that one uh, square root of two is not really a, uh, a rational number. So it cannot be represented as uh, the rational fraction of unit segment. So what do we do in this particular case? How can we define a measure which is irrational? How can we measure irrational segments? How can we measure the rational segment? Well, that's easy. If you remember, we take the unit segment, divide it, by, divide it into n equal parts. So this is one n. And then we combine them together, and we will get m times. So we get m over n rational length. So we can physically measure it using the, the circle, uh, using the compass and, uh, and the straight ruler. How can you measure this? It's not easy, right? Now, let's remember the theory of limits. Um, I do recommend you to go to Unisor, to the algebra section, and review um, those lectures which are dedicated to sequences, series, and, uh, and limits. Because measurement of irrational segments is actually in a, in a truly mathematical fashion, can only be considered a certain limit of rational segments. Um, and it's based on the fact that any irrational number can be approached, can serve as the limit of certain process where rational numbers are involved. For instance, if you will take, for instance, a, a decimal representation of square root of uh, uh, 2, it will be 1.414, and I don't remember whatever else is. So you can always consider a sequence of rational segments. First rational segment is 1, next is 1.4, next is 1.41, next is 1.414, etc. So these rational segments, each of them is actually rational because we have a finite decimal uh, fraction. So we can build it in some way or another. But their limit, and I'm talking about the limit theory, about sequences, about series, and all this stuff, their limit actually is this particular thing. So we can only tell that the a true measurement can be made not like precisely, but only as a process and as a limit of that particular process of approximating a particular irrational segment with its rational parts. First, you represent like 1, then 1.4, then 1.41, then 1.414, etc., etc., and only the limit of this would be this irrational segment. So, measurement of all these 
irrational things is always related to some process where you are going uh, to a limit. Now, if the segments, uh, it, it might not be uh, absolutely obvious, then I will make it a little bit more obvious for you with another example. So let's talk about circle. Circle, and I will talk separately about how to do it, but in theory, what is a circle? Circle is not a, a, a straight line, right? It's curved. How can we measure a curve with a straight unit segment? Impossible. I cannot really put that onto this particular curve. It will not fit, no matter how I try. So we have to define the lengths of these curved uh, lines in some other way. And again, the theory of limits actually comes to mind, because we can always approximate this particular curve with some kind of regular or not very regular polygon. And the better approximation is the uh, closer the lengths of this particular, the perimeter of this particular polygon would be to something which we can think about as the lengths of uh, the circle, the, cir the circumference of the circle. So, to define what is a circumference of the circle, we really have to consider this approximation and go to certain limit under certain conditions, well, basically like more and more sides of this polygon would be uh, closer and closer to the um, circumference of the, uh, of the circle. This is the process how we can define what is the length of a circle, what is the circumference, rather, of a circle. And it goes not only to, to, to circles, it goes to any line. I mean, I can just talk about the line like this. What is its length? If you want to measure it in these particular units. And again, the answer is you have to approximate it as much as you can and go to some kind of a limit. And that limit is, by definition, is the length of this particular curve or that particular curve. Um, now, uh, the only thing which I would like to talk about is how about area? Now, if the length seems to be a little bit more complicated, the levels of complications are, first we are talking about integer lengths, like height of the tower of the toy cubes, then we go to rational lengths, when you have to really divide the unit uh, of the measurement into a certain number of parts and then combine them to get to the uh, rational segments. Then to irrational segments, the measure of which can be defined only as a certain limit of a certain process of approximation. Then, even more complex, you have to go to a nonlinear um, objects like like circle, for instance, like circumference, of the, how to define cir circumference of a circle, then you have to really like approximate the whole curve with certain finite number of uh, rational segments. Now we will go to areas. Now with areas, is it, it's even more difficult because the shapes are much more complex. First of all, let's talk about the unit of measurements. Traditionally, we have a small square and if the side is equal to 1 in terms of segment lengths. So this is the segment of the length 1. It's a unit of measurements of the lengths. Then we can say that this particular segment has area of 1. Whatever the units are. I mean, I'm not talking about units like centimeters, meters, yards, or inches, or whatever else. We are talking about abstract numbers. So if a certain um, segment is assigned a number one as its measurement, so it's a measurement unit, then this particular square is assigned an area of one. 
Yes, in case of a length, if it's meter, then in case of a, a square, it's a square meter. If it's inch, it's square inch, etc. But let's just not talk about this. Only numbers. If this is the length of 1, then the area of this square is 1. By definition, this is our unit of measurement. What can we measure using this particular uh, unit? Well, we can definitely measure something like this. A rectangle which has integer number of uh, unit of lengths on each side. Because this is, in this case, it measures 2, this is measures 3, so it's 6 different squares like this, which means the area is equal to 6. And obviously our additiveness is preserved in this particular case. If we consider only these rectangles with integer number of uh, uh, unit segments on each side, we get very clear picture of pure additiveness. Everything is defined quite well. Now, the complications, obviously. Uh, the unit, uh, it, it, that, that, it, the length of these sides might not necessarily be an integer number of uh, the, the length units, right? So it can be, again, rational, it can be irrational, etc., etc. So basically, knowing the lengths of these two sides and noticing that in case of an integer, the array is actually the result of multiplication, I can always say that I can obviously prove that this is true for any rational segments, because you can divide every, every, every rational segments into one nth of, uh, uh, of, of the unit of lengths, and then the multiplication will be preserved, obviously. But even with irrational, I can always say that, okay, since my length of irrational segment is a limit of corresponding rational ones, and for every rational, I do have the result of multiplication of lengths by uh, sides of the, lengths of the sides as an as an area. I can actually say that this is a valid definition of multiplying the lengths, whether it's rational or irrational, to get the area of uh, to get the area of this particular rectangle. So it's very important to understand that in case of integer, it's obvious. In case of rational, it can be proved. And in case of irrational, we are using the, the, the fact that, that we're basically approximating irrational segments with rational. And that's how we define area of any rectangle. All right. Now let's talk about circle. <laughs> Try to put this as a measure of this circle. It's not easy. Uh, it doesn't fit, obviously. I mean, it fits somewhere in the middle, but how about the edges? So, it's, again, the same kind of a difficult problem. We have to gradually increase the complexity of uh, different um, areas which we can, different objects which we can measure the area of. So, in the case of a circle, for instance, what we do First, we do as much as we can integer squares like this, right? Then, when we have edges, what we can do, we can divide it like this. Let's say 10 vertical and 10 horizontal. So each of them would be 1 hundredths of 1, like 1 tenth times 1 tenth. And then we can use these small ones to inscribe into whatever the holes we have here. But we still have holes closer to the edges. Well, then each of them we will divide again in 10 by 10 into 100 different pieces, and the process can be continued, and that's how we will inscribe into our circle uh, first integers, uh, then fractions, then the fractions of fractions, etc., and by summarizing, by using the additiveness of the measure, we can always measure. Now, it's a different story that I can actually uh, calculate the, the measure using some formula, like pi r squared, where r is the circle's uh, radius. 
But this is all kind of a subsequent after I defined what actually measure is. Because if you will tell me, okay, the, the area of the, of, of the circle is pi r squared, uh, pi r squared. Well, what is the measure? I mean, I can't really, by definition, say that the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So first I have to define measure in some basic terms, like these ones, and then prove that pi r squared is actually the measure of the area. So these are most important elements of, this is an introduction actually, important properties of measure, so you have a feel that it, it's not such a simple thing as just applying for rectangles, for instance, the formula time, uh, lengths times, uh, time, times widths, or for a square, or for a, for a circle, it, it's, it's pi r square or something like this. It's not just the formula which is, um, which is supposed to be, um, well, learned, if you wish, uh, if you're talking about measure. You really have to understand the theory behind it. The, the property of the measure in, in an abstract sense, that this is an, uh, an additive positive function, non-negative rather, um, and it has certain properties, etc. Um, one more very small um, note about measurements. If you have two congruent uh, uh, geometrical objects, and we measure their measure, then it must be the same, right? If you have two congruent segments, they must have the same length. If you have two congruent triangles, whatever the measure, whatever the area of a triangle actually is, the measure of two congruent triangles must be the same. Now, this is, uh, again, an axiomatic property of, of the measure and should be considered uh, together with additiveness, uh, existence of the zero measure, existence of the unit measure, etc., etc. And that concludes my introduction into length and measure. I will go into more details about what is the length of the circumference and how, how it can be measured using the theory of limits um, or, or area or whatever else. That would be in the subsequent, in subsequent lectures. This is just an introduction general theory of what the actual measure is. So you have some more appreciation to abstract approach to, to measure, because we can measure all the different things, not necessarily the lengths and the area, as is typical, but we can also measure, for instance, the towers of uh, toy cubes, or anything else. Uh, thank you very much. That's it for today.